Okay, we're going to start with the nation. Key portfolios for Edun, Alake, Uyetola, Fagbemi, and Adelabu. NNPCL's $3 billion buffer to strengthen Naira's stabilized exchange rate. PDP members protest at the inauguration of Oshun Council caretaker committees. Customs intercepts 299 cartons of codeine syrup along the Lagos Ibadan Road. Tight security. Um, to prevent attack on railways. Chidoka, PDP will collapse if not reformed. And Hamed Hassan is Jay's Bank's acting MD CEO. All right, let me start with the codeine. So the Nigerian Customs yesterday intercepted about 299 cartons of codeine syrup concealed um, in a DAF truck that was stopped along the Lagos Ibadan Expressway. The acting controller general, that's uh, Bashir Adewali Adeni, said that the interception was a demonstration of services um, committed to curb the menace. Um, according to them, an examination that was carried out on the truck um, saw that about the cartons of codeine was quite enormous. Um, the codeine syrup is designated as a controlled item due to its rampant abuse by our delinquent youth. Many of you know it already is a banned uh, product in Nigeria. The misuse and illicit distribution of codeine containing the medications have given rise to grave security and public health concerns. It should be properly prescribed. You can't, use, you can't use it indiscriminately in the country. In response, regulatory measures have been implemented to curb its availability and, and unrestricted access. This underscores the importance of the work NDLA is doing to prevent and um, stop the express use of um, this um, drug. I mean, codeine is really, really hard. 299 cartons. That's part of the smuggling we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, another story in Nation. Yes, I have um, security agents have been deployed in the bushes and train stations on the Abuja Kaduna Rail Corridor. Um, they said uh, the deployment of soldiers and other security agents is uh, one of the security measures that has been initiated by NRC, that's the Nigerian Railway Corporation, because they had heard about a plot to attack trains plying that route. Um, so they some of the things that have been put in place, um, they said there's CCTV camera, they've got about 15 um, security personnel or policemen who will be, 15 riot policemen who will be on board the train, and then there are soldiers around bushes. It's, uh, there's also going to be all sorts of air surveillance, and this is in response to a letter dated August 11 from the DSS, and it says that um, there's been a, it says, Intelligent reports indicate an impending threat to seamless train transportation along the uh, Abuja Kaduna train service. And in view of the threat inherent, they need to forestall likely breach of security. And so the extra military checkpoints, rail track military checkpoints, patrol police checkpoints, patrol security, and so many others have been deployed to the area to protect. Okay, I wanted to check the Chidioka, Chidoka story. Um, he's talking about the PDP. Um, will collapse if they don't have reforms. He says he's the, he was the former aviation minister and he's a chieftain of the um, PDP. He says that um, PDP, uh, they, if they don't face reforms very soon, they will collapse. He says that they, they were in, party, in government for 16 years, yeah. so they have not gotten used to being an opposition party. So they now talk, they still talk as if they are government, they're still in government. But that's Come, it has taken them eight years oh, to realize that they are no more government. Oh. They better start criticizing. So they are not <laughs> going to be criticizing uh, the yes. Bola Tinubu administration. And uh, hopefully... The APC needs a, a good opposition party. Exactly. They don't have, they have to. a, a they have good to. opposition party. Okay. They, they said because they thought they were still in government. Imagine. Come on. That doesn't make it. That's eight years. That's eight years. It's so taken ahead. them eight years to, to realize. realize it. So go ahead, please. Yes, yeah, so I was going to take a story about the NNPCL $3 billion um, Right buffer and it is coming as a good news i took the story yesterday about the fact that there's going to be and there was a there's going to be a meeting that will take place yesterday that was going to ensure that all those speculating and buying dollar with the hope that it will hit 1000 should quickly go and sell and good news is yesterday the um, the naira gained 100 which is two percent um in the parallel market it was um b before then it was only for 950 something 970 something but by the close of business yesterday, dollar, um, Naira was selling for 840 to a dollar in the parallel market. And in the official window, IE window, it was selling for 759 And this is based on the contract signed by, by NNPCL as, and Afrexim Bank in Cairo, ensuring that 
um, NAPCL is able to give Nigeria $3 mm. billion dollar mm -hmm. liquidity, mm. which will be available up front. And it's an exciting news. I'm happy to see a bit of stability. Um, I thought we're going to give it in tranches, though. I'm not, I yes, it's not going to come all, all through. But the fact that there's going to be dollar coming in, yeah. that amount, yeah. gives the country a better leverage and yeah. there will be less speculation. Yeah. I'm happy to hear Okay, it. moving on quickly now to the punch. Ministerial Portfolios, oil workers demand results as Tinumbu heads mm -hmm. Petroleum Ministry. Miscreants terrorize Lagos communities. Government uh, vows clamp down. Crash. Army chief deploys more soldiers in Niger. Villagers flee. Panic in Ibadan settlement as Mogaji seals 200 houses. FG tackles forex crisis with $3 billion loan. Article knocks Tinumbu. Nigeria earns $742 billion oil revenue in 21 years, says Naiti. Naira rebounds, trades 850 Naira to the dollar at parallel market. Okay, which story are we taking? Let me start with the human interest. Why did you have that? I took that story. It's okay. So, Go on. Some residents of Lagos have expressed concerns uh, over the increased activities of miscreants in certain areas. According to the report, however, it's, um, it's in um, Ikeja on the bridge, Berga, Agege, Penn Cinema, and others. But I would also like to add Ikoi, VI area, and Leki, because I know that we've got a lot of reports within those areas too. The residents have complained that um, hoodlums, they took their belongings while they're actually on their way to work or coming back from work in the Yanokwaja area. According to this particular uh, witness, he says, I was going to Ogba, to Ikwaja, and I bought an Ekeke uh, in Penn Cinema, where I was about to cross the bridge, and then they accosted him, demanded all his money. He told them he didn't have money. They pushed him on the railway and demanded um, everything he had, and he had to give them um, 7000 on him, which was on him. He had to give it to them. So the government, actually, they're doing what they can. According to the government, they are uh, putting together a task force, um, according to the spokesperson of the Lagos State Environmental um, trying to get his full name here. No, actually, uh, the chief press secretary, actually, governor um, of, of, the, of the governor, Mr. Boega Akoshile, said that the government is working assiduously and seriously to rid the state of miscreants, actually. The state uh, tax force, headed by Shola um, Jejeluyi and other agencies, are at work ensuring that they rid, of state, they rid the state of all these miscreants and protect the citizens from all um, these hoodlums in the various neighborhoods that have been, that have been identified. Okay, another story in Yes, they say over 200 houses were said to have been sealed off on Wednesday hmm. at Monia in Akinyele local government area of your state by a mogaji. Um, that's a compound head, was laying claims to the ownership of the land. So the, the, there's a previous warning that had been made by the Ulubado of Ibadan uh, where he warned all mogajis and balers not to resell any land or property already disposed of by their forebears. But the, yesterday, they said that four communities, Alaja Phase 1, Alaja Phase 2, Isa, Guna, and Akwamode on Wednesday, the residents, um, they had police officers and people coming in demanding that they pay money. People say, some, one of the persons that spoke to the reporter said, I've been living here 23 years, and all mm -hmm. of a sudden they're asking me to pay again for land or houses that have already been sold. So it looks like it's an ongoing thing. Lands or properties that have been sold before, the children or whatever will come back and ask for money on those properties again, even though a warning has been put out for them not to do it. But they're able to do it with police officers, which mm. is also strange. So <laughs> I guess we'll find out how this has been so, will yeah, be handled so going some forward. people running helter skelter. Yes. Can you imagine? So people you have lived there for 23 years, they just come and evict mm. you. It's wrong. Let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue with our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still reviewing Punch. Yeah, I was talking about the Naiti story, but just above Naiti story was a story that relates to me. Inflation hits developers and the chairman of Red and Lagos chapter is crying out to the government to see what they can do speedily. He said that based on the economic factors and the changes that took place under this administration, it has caused a huge um, impact that the cost of building materials are largely imported and it has gone up by over 70%. He said the cost, that's from um, the chairman of Lagos, Redan, Bamedele Onolaja, mentioned the fact that to get, to get um, laborers to do the work as well has really increased. Sharp sand, granite, aluminum, roofing sheets, tiles, that it is leaving developers a lot to grapple with. Right. And he's asking the government to step in and also work with, because many people are shouting, I'm always taking story of Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, but today I'm taking the story of Real Estate Developers Association of Nigeria, so that the okay. government knows that this area too is very important.
Okay, Daily Sun very quickly. Fagwe Me for AGF. Umahi works with FCT Badaru Defense. NNPC moves to save Naira. Niger attack chief of army staff visits troops, charges them to go after bandits. Mba Edioga adopt final addresses, awaits final judgment. Uh, Varsity's poly um, lecturers migrate abroad through our foreign scholarship is TED Fund. Hmm. How Nigerian crew members Britain died in Seplat's drilling rig mishap. 2023 polls, Nigeria now in their need of healing, rebuilding, says PFN Makinde. Okay, which story are we taking? Um, so the chief of army staff, um, Lieutenant General Tauri Lagbaja, um, went on a solidarity visit and assessment to the Niger state, um, to Niger state following, as we know, the troops encounter with terrorists in Zungeru <coughs> in, in the area. And then we also are aware of the um, supreme price some of the soldiers had to paid, you so know, sorry. they lost their lives. So the, um, Mr. the chief of army staff, first of all, commended the troops for their bravery, he urged them not to allow the incident dwindle their morale, or rather to do everything in their power to defeat the adversaries of our people and take back every inch of space where they are hibernating in our land. And he says also that this is a noble profession of arms. And um, so the best, one of the noble professions that that's what they are practicing. And uh, he also assures them that the troops, that he will do everything within available resources to give Nigerian army personnel and their families the best in terms of welfare. And he says that topmost in the pillars of his command philosophy uh, directed the immediate reinstatement of troops with additional combat enablers to enhance their operational effectiveness. I mean, that sounded good. Yeah, I mean, yeah. good morale-boosting um, speech to give them. Right. And thank Presence. you to our, um, our military and our hearts go out to the families <coughs> of those who have lost loved ones. Right. Yes. Okay. Take go ahead. One second story now. Right. Let me, yeah. let me go, go ahead. Okay. So, uh, Varsity's police COE lecturers Jackba through our foreign scholarships, TED Fund. So TED Fund is complaining that some of the lecturers that they sent on the scholarship, you know, to bring in more knowledge uh, have absconded. They have jackpot. <laughs> if there's a word like that. So bad. Yes. And uh, they are um, saying people. that they are working with the schools where they send these lecturers to, to ensure that once their programs are done, they bring them back home because we cannot continue to spend a lot Support of money them. sending these lecturers abroad and then they don't come back with the knowledge mm. you know, that they learned. I took the story about the Seplat Synergy, um, the, the drilling rig that collapsed, uh, I think it was early hours of Tuesday morning. We're waiting for right. confirmation of those who have died. You took that story already? No, go ahead. Oh. Go ahead. <laughs> so, well, based on this story, two have been confirmed dead. Britain and five Nigerian oil workers have been reported dead in, not two, Britain and five Nigerian oil workers have been reported dead in the drilling. Um, I took that, I took that story yesterday, but I wanted to confirm that indeed if they, if they were um, saved from the, um, from the rig, they're about 92 out of 96. We're saved and we're waiting for the remaining four. But now it's confirmed that five of them have been. Yeah. Okay, let me um, just, so, just an addition to that yeah. because it's basically the same story. Uh, Nimasa is saying that the oh. rig that capsized was, was operating on Nigerian water since 2016 without requisite approvals. <clears throat> okay, the Nigerian Tribune very quickly. Naira gains and NPCL gets $3 billion loan to stabilize currency. The J crisis echoes military chiefs to meet in Ghana. The master says capsized drilling rig shattered by Seplat operating to, without approval since 2016. And uh, yeah, nominations open for 2023 Obafemi Aulo Leadership Prize. Okay. Which story? Uh, Any new story there? Niger yes, crisis? Who has yes, that? Niger, yes. ECOWAS military chiefs to meet in Ghana. And the story says. Um, the military chiefs of the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, will meet on Thursday in Accra, Ghana, amid tensions over a possible military intervention in Niger, according to um, Ghana's army spokesperson. And uh, ECOWAS is saying that uh, they would continue to use a dialogue, you know, to solve the issues, the arising matters in the country, and also, um, you know, ensure that 
they restore democracy as soon as they can. Okay. That's it's just an update on the Niger story. Yeah. Vanguard, VK Umayi Edun um, get FCT Works um, and Finance Ministers respectively. Naira appreciates, uh, we talked about earlier. Let's find out the story of not taking. Sanusi to Nigerians, don't allow president's governors to intimidate you. And I think that's pretty much the story in Vanguard today. Yeah, Sanusi has said that we should not allow governors or presidents to intimidate us. Speak your mind. <laughs> he said, speak your mind. He said, it's not one of us that can be politicians. He said, if he had uh, tried to be a president or a president, he probably have won, but it's not, that's not what he's cut out for, and it's not one of us. So those of us that are not, we must hold them accountable. Because if we don't, uh, it's our children that will suffer. Mm. There will be no country for our nation to come to. So please, don't be afraid to talk. So it's not a comfortable situation to be in. That by the time these guys might have finished with us, our children will not have anywhere to call a nation. I wonder what informed so. that conversation. That conversation. Uh, yeah. I'm, sure, have... I'm sure there would have been an event. Maybe he was speaking somewhere. Uh, I don't know. They, they said when it was a viral video, actually. Yeah, it was a video. Uh, okay. I'm just wondering what instigated that yeah. because he was saying that don't let any president intimidate you, don't let any governor intimidate you. Mm -hmm. You're not mm -hmm. inferior to them because they're in political positions. And I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, what's what could, what led to that conversation? Mm -hmm. Any bad more? Maybe he's getting some <laughs> pinching. There was a story we skipped. Um, it seemed a bit of comfort to the governor of Ogun State, um, Dr. Biodun, who's the, the, the tribunal sitting on his case. The allegation that came against him was the fact that he, there was vote buying and inducement of voters by Ladi Adidibu, who is the PDP, um, Adebutsu, the PDP candidate, um, gubernatorial candidate. But the case was struck out at the appeal court sitting in Abuja. They affirmed the decision of the Ogun State's um, governorship election petition tribunal saying that he's rightfully in his position. They also mentioned the fact that, um, and at this point, at least we know that this, th th that position is no longer under contention in any form. They cited several court cases and the, <coughs> the, 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 lead, the judgment was read by Justice M.B. Idris. Okay, let me just uh, read the headlines on The Guardian. Resurgence of killings threatens North Central State's food production. And there's an interesting data here from The Guardian. It says 1,200 lives lost in North Central due to banditry, kidnapping, fa and farmers' heads men clash. Uh, and we're saying that in Benue, we have about 300 lost. Nasara, 250. FCT, none. Um, Niger, Niger State, 90. Play to 600. Yes. You know, kidnapping in Abuja has been 15, and Niger, 8. So these are really damning data that um, must be able to push the government to, um, to find some kind of solution very quickly. Very um, I guess when, it's when you know, so I was telling my husband this morning about the, we we're discussing plateau and the cleaning, and I'm like, talking to, having you here and mm. have, knowing you and knowing that I know someone whose family is in Jos, mm -hmm. and I'm hearing stories of what is happening, it has a different meaning, mm. because I understand <laughs> the impact, it's not just numbers, yeah. this is a huge number that no government should overlook when they are hearing Even it was um, Stella Dean, our uh, director of news, yeah. her village was uh -uh. called distress. She had to leave and go uh -uh. and see how she can attend to people in the village. So it was really, really, really painful. So it's, it's pretty close to home here. Final paper this day, let's find a story of not taking. At um, Tinubu assigns portfolios, we discussed that early. Uh, FBN Holdings announces Otedala as non-executive director. Tinubu Jonathan Mark Ogbega Bago Obaseki rejoiced with Babangida on his 82nd birthday. Yeah. Wow. Mm. And Forex crisis, we must explore these things. Uh, will not get better, says Obaseki. You wanted to take that story early, but I discouraged yeah. you because I thought we wouldn't get there. <laughs> but okay, I think that's all we can take. Happy birthday to Babangida. They, they, a lot of people were praying against his life, but the man has decided has lived yes. long <laughs> enough, despite all the causes. Let no, that, that was in Hope 93, you know, the energy there. So when you think, so when you, you, said, you posted a video recently of young people, those, um, um, what the comrades, you know, when they were really back then, and I, I saw remember. the energy. Fast no. forward. Causing bad leadership or causing leaders does not make any difference. Doesn't work. Just <laughs> vote, speak up in the right way, like follow but, but the rule of law. In those days, according to the events, mm. the people are not allowed to, People votes, did cast their, their votes, votes did not their count. votes didn't count, mm. which was what caused the cost to increase. Anyway, we have to go. Again, but, uh, God has plans. He has his own plan. plan.